to you about software. And Lou has a very interesting perspective about the evolution of software and how it has changed not only the tech industry, but the way that businesses should look at how they do business. But I wanted to start with the sort of a gotcha question, which is New Relic, which by the way, is an uh, anagram of Lou's name. That's how they came up with the name for the company. Uh, allows businesses to monitor their applications, to get intelligence out of their applications. And so I would like you to tell the group here, when you use the software yourself at New Relic, what did you change after learning and seeing what your software could do? Give us an example of something that caused you to change the way that you run your own business. Oh yeah, I, um, first of all, I love using our products and, and I'm particularly addicted to our, one of our more recent products, Insights. I'll, I'll go to New Relic Insights 30 times a day um, and just answer questions like, um, a, a customer is coming in. Let's, let's say uh, CNET comes in to visit with me. I say, well, how many people from CNET are logging in and using our products and, and, and who are the most active users? And so I can get a sense, is this you know, a product that's used in your company? Um, I can get a sense of um, which features that people use in, in our software um, correlate to highest spend. And of course, it's, that's, that's helpful for us, but our customers can do that too when they use our products. So, you know, the context of this is, yeah, you touched on this, I think the world right now is, this is the age of software, 2015. And, 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 and you know, hundreds of years from now, and historians look back at this point in time, they'll say, this is when the world is really being changed by software. Why now? It's cloud and mobile. And, and both of those technologies are, are enabling everybody in the world to have their lives transformed by software. And so we're spending more hours per day in front of software than ever before, right? It's up to like half our day, maybe more, in front of a screen trying to do something with software. And when you're spending half your life in front of software, it ought to be a good experience. Life is too short for bad software. You want to actually enjoy it. This shouldn't be painful, especially enterprise software. And so that mission, we serve the people who care about great software. And we think that by providing data about what the software does, um, we can make that software better. Okay, but let's go back to my question. Which I know, is, but I'm so passionate about the software. Well, and thing. I'm also going to take you to task on the age of software, because as a tech reporter in Silicon Valley, for 20 years, I've been hearing about the age of software for a very long time, and every era of software development is always the age of software. But before we go there, tell me something that you actually learned from using your own software that caused you to change your business. What did we learn? We learned that um, customers who use our plugins, we've got a, a New Relic plugins, 80, 80 different plugins, and extend our visibility to the databases and firewalls, things like that. The average customer that uses those spends about 30% more than people who don't use plugins. So that affects how we market it, the plugins, it affects um, how we position it, and it helps our sales team position it, and know that that will correlate to higher spend. Um, so that, that we, we, we changed our go-to-market based on that data. Um, on, the, on the just performance availability side, we daily use New Relic to tell us what, what we need to do to make the site faster and more available. Right? Software is a complex thing. You can't guess at what is causing the page to be slow. You need data to do that. And so, you know, specifics might be, oh, there's a um, you know, missing index on a, on a new query that we just introduced, and so that's impacting page load time, or it might be um, a, a synchronization problem. We detect those things, and then we help people fix the software. That's just like part of the, the way we iterate as a company. Okay, so you improve the speed of your software, and you've done a better job marketing plugins and making more plugins. Those are two examples, yeah. I know who our top 100 customers are by spend based and, and which one of those are not using our software. So we have a customer success team, and it's a small number of team. We have over 11,000 paid customers. Which of those 11,000 paid customers do we need to call because their usage has dropped off recently to encourage them to, you know, low usage, you know, is an early indicator of potential churn. So th that's the kind of actual data we, we live on with New Relic. Okay, I want to ask you about software. People have been talking about how everything is the age of software. When I started covering Apple back in the late 80s, Apple described itself, Steve Jobs described them as a software company, actually, not as a hardware company. Right. Because it's about usage, and it's about getting people to like what they're doing with your technology and wanting to engage with that technology. And before we stepped on stage, you talked about the challenge being having 
companies understand that enterprise software should be something that people want to use and that they should want to engage with and have fun. So how do you create enterprise software when you're not Apple that people actually want to play with that they actually love? Because that is not, love and enterprise software are, are not two phrases that are usually used. We need to learn together. from the consumer companies. And uh, I interestingly, my first job was at Apple in 92 and I loved, I, I thought that really grounded me in the importance of caring about the details of the customer experience. Well, I think the great consumer software companies, the great consumer product companies, not only think about what the customer wants, but actually what the customer feels. What is the customer's emotional state when they use the product? And what those feelings are actually the motivation that turns into increased usage, likelihood to purchase, things like that. So in, in, the, in, the, in the case of New Relic, we think hard on like, what gives the person that tingle down the spine when they discover something new because of using our product, right? Those moments of discovery, that joy, that little adrenaline shot that you feel when you suddenly discover something and, and, and through, through, through seeing the data that we provide. We want to we wanna tap that. That turns into somebody not only being excited about using your product, but they tell their friends about it too. And that goes far beyond just like, you know, the dry presentation of the data. It's how we present it in a way that just encourages more of those delightful moments of discovery. So then let's talk about your development team. How yeah. How does it break up? You, user interface, how do you get to a spine-tingling hmm. moment in enterprise software? Well, it, it's in the DNA of our company that these things are important. If, if you, you know, we're a 700-person company now, so we've got lots of specialization. But the, the person who sits closer to my office than anyone else in the company isn't the president, isn't the CFO, it's the lead designer. He's in earshot because, you know, I feel like that's just, like, the, the most important thing that I want to be able to quickly iterate with, if I feel like there's something we need to do, an opportunity to make our products better, more, more desirable to our customers, help them you know, achieve great things, um, I want to do that in collaboration with my lead designer. Um, you know, I, I have a very, very ra you know, rapid and frequent conversations with my CTO as well, but it's, it's built into the culture that we want to build products, and, our, and people who come to work for New Relic understand we want to build products that when the customer uses them, the, they almost feel like, how is that even possible that they can do that? You know, and, 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 and that's, that's not easy to do when, you're, when, you're, when your customers are really technical people. Most of our customers are developers. They're a tough crowd to please, but I think we managed to do that for hundreds of thousands of developers. At your last company, you started um, Wiley Technology Application Performance Management in the late 80s, right? Late 90s, I'm yeah. sorry, late 90s. Um, where was the lead designer sitting? Did you even have one? That was, that was one of the fundamental learnings from Wiley was, um, I was the lead designer, and I'm not that good a designer. I, I know what I want, but I can't do it. Um, so, um, and we had a bit of that magic on how the product worked. People were amazed that Wiley could do what it did, but it didn't deliver enough joy. And so the way we, and that's the typical historical enterprise software company, which was you covered for that with like really smart people in the field, sales engineers, sales reps, trying to evoke that response out of the customer to make them to purchase because the product's not doing a good enough job of, 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 of selling itself, right? So I felt like if we had a product that was so desirable to use, our customers, our, our, our sales reps could close more deals and spend less time evangelizing and that would be actually a much more efficient business. So you talked about at the beginning of our, our conversation here about mobile, mobile driving a lot of the usage of these apps, which of course then explains why those apps have to be better designed. People don't have patience to figure out how to they use don't. your software. They don't, and, and, and we're getting less and less patient all the time. So to your earlier point of why now, why is the age of software, um, and mobile is so relevant to it. Um, mobile is enabling businesses to connect with their customers in ways that they weren't able to do before. For example, I've maybe walked into my bank's branch two or three times in the last year, but I've used my, my banking app hundreds of times. I mean, it's my primary interface to the bank. And in fact, um, I've, I do more banking with the bank that has the best app. So to contrast that to 20 years ago when people were talking about the power of software, the power of software 20 years ago was, hey, these banks can process more transactions in the back office. And if, the, if, they're, if that software is hard to use, well, that's not exposed to the customer. It might just be a long wait time while you're on the other end of the phone, right? But now the software is the face of the company. And that's transformational. The other thing about, and this is the cloud thing, is the barrier to creating production software is so much lower. 
you know, if I wanted to be a professional software developer, which I did when I graduated in 93, I, you know, I, I had to go to a company like Apple or Microsoft because, you know, in order to share my creation with people, I needed this, this company that could distribute it to the world. Now, if you can, with, it, with a credit card and an Amazon Web Services deployment, your creative idea is exposed to the whole world. And I think that software is an incredible creative medium. It's not a science in and of itself, it's art and science. And so you've got this incredible creative capacity that can reach the whole world through the cloud and through mobile that couldn't happen 10 years ago. And, and when you've got all that much creative energy going into this medium, I think it changes the world in a fundamental way that is unprecedented. How do you balance being fast and innovative in a world where you can do very rapid product development and giving something to customers that is not a toy or experiment. Hmm. And the reason that I say that is because Zuckerberg of Facebook last year made a point of stepping back from a statement he had made earlier at Facebook, which is, we're moving so fast, break things, go ahead and break things. Right. And now he's kind of come around and said, well, maybe we shouldn't break them. Maybe we should deliver an experience that people actually want to have and enjoy and tinker. So well, I feel like New Relic has a very important part to play in that question because I do believe in order to be competitive and to innovative, you must have very rapid deployment cycles. You, have, you can't like deploy quarterly. At New Relic, we deploy three times a day. So with all that change comes an incredible spike in risk. This is what you're talking about. So if stuff is changing all the time, you absolutely need to rethink visibility. You need to reduce the risk of production change. And the way you reduce that risk is with deep visibility so you can deploy with confidence. Right? You can't just look at log files and, and say that's a good proxy for the customer experience. You need to measure the customer experience. And, and, and we do that better than anyone. We're, we're the number one end user experience monitoring product in the world um, by, in terms of number of browsers installed and also by, by business size. And, and, and I think it's, it's fundamental to the growth of the company. What, what do you mean by visibility? I mean measuring every, so let me use the example of my online banking. I, I, I press deposit the check on my phone. I want to measure how long it took between tapping that and seeing how long the transaction went over the wireless network to the back end server, through the database, and back. I want to know how fast that was. Was it, um, and if there was a performance problem, was it, was it in the wireless network? Was it in the code of the phone? Was it in the database? In the back? Then I want to know how often people are doing it. What time of day are they doing it? Are the people that are doing that spending more or purchasing other services? It's all those business insights that come from the very same data, right? We're not asking our customers to send us different data. We're just slicing and dicing it in a different way to answer business questions. And that's why I think while APM is an interesting and large market, we've got a much larger opportunity with what we call software analytics, taking the same data to answer business questions. You're talking about software, but I want to ask you about hardware for a second. We're at the beginning of what people say is the age of wearables. And what role do you see wearables playing in the enterprise market, if any? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, for companies that are investing in Internet of Things, it's an even bigger problem on just how do I measure whether or not the things are working. <laughs> it's a big, big data problem. Um, and uh, we think we've got a foundational technology that's perfect for collecting data on what the things are doing. Um, and so if your fridge is having trouble talking to your toaster or whatever they use for these examples, um, yeah, New Relic can measure all of that and tell you um, how, to, how to improve that customer experience by, by measuring the latency between these things and understanding how people are using them. Are you looking at how you would serve up the important information from all that data collection to a, an Apple Watch? Well, we're the only company in our, in our competitive space that has a mobile app, an iPhone app, Android app, um, and, and it's only a matter of time before we have something for the Apple Watch as well. Um, you know, our customers are responsible for their software's health and availability 24-7. Let me take you an example. During the healthcare.gov crisis, um, New Relic was brought in late in that crisis to turn that project around. And we played an instrumental role in fixing healthcare.gov, and they're on record as saying that. So that was a wonderful moment for us. And there are literally, every day, when the, uh, President Obama's CTO had to brief the president, he'd walk in and check the New Relic app on his phone so he had the latest information on the health of the website. Um, so, so, you know, just thinking of this as something that's only for desktops, which our, all of our competitors think, oh, you, 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 you manage your app when you're at your desk at work. That's so 1999. I mean, like, this is, a, this is something you've always got to have connection to, and, and we're going to, wherever there is technology, we want visibility about what matters to you, which is your software. 
Uh, does that mean you're building out your design team? Well, I think it's, uh, we're always looking for talented designers, talented developers, um, quality over quantity. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting design challenge. It's, it's very different, you know, we attract people who get that this is a really hard thing to collect trillions of data points from devices, from mobile phones, from browsers, from code of the server, and somehow make that meaningful, actionable data that anyone can use, again, without, um, without New Relic having to train our customers. If you've got over 11,000 customers, we've only got 700 employees, clearly we've got a product that's quite easy to use. Um, and that's hard to do with the complexity of what we're monitoring. So there are a lot of entrepreneurs in the audience, and I know setting up a company is very easy and quick these days, as you mentioned, because of Amazon Web Services and, and a whole host of other tools. But sustaining the company and having people who want to work there and make it a success is a challenge. And you recently did a survey of your own employees to figure out what the values of your company were yeah. eight years in. Why did you do it eight years in? Why, why did oh, you even I, do it? Yeah, this is a great question. I, um, I believe you can declare your core values too early. And the analogy I use is kind of like asking my daughter who she is philosophically while she's nine years old. She's going to say, well, I, I'm whoever you want to be. You know, core values aren't about, um, yeah, in my mind, core values ought to be descriptive of how your company is different from other companies. So using things like integrity and customer first, these are important values, but they're not too different from other good, good, all good companies understand that integrity, that's like table stakes, right? So we had to go through 100 people asking deep questions about what's different about New Relic. We discovered like, for example, people are really authentic at New Relic. People don't try to be someone they're not. Um, and, and that authenticity is uniquely us, and so we want to make it clear that you're at your best at New Relic when you don't give a damn what other people, uh, what, about what the image of you ought to be, and you're just yourself and no one else. Um, and, and we want to embrace that, we want to recognize the people who are the, their most authentic selves. Um, and so I, I just think, um, uh, you know, while these core values are super important, um, you can rush it, you can rush the process and come out with something that you can't tell it was pinned on the wall whether it was your company or somebody else's, and we didn't want that. It's too important. So being authentic sounds like a very nice corporate value, but how do you translate that? What does that mean in a meeting? Anybody can say whatever they want. It's not about hurting people's feelings. All right, let me give you a counterexample. It's, it's, it, 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 we're in Las Vegas. I am my least authentic when I'm in those thumping loud clubs where everyone's so freaking cool. I feel like the least cool person there. I feel uptight. I feel like I've got to somehow appear to be someone I'm not. So I want to create the, the opposite of that environment, where you feel so comfortable being yourself. And, 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 that, and that involves like, you know, diversity, that involves all walks of life, people just being their, their authentic selves, so that they don't worry about that stuff and they can just, they can just do great work. And I, I think in a lot of companies, there's this whole, it's like high school, people are just trying to appear to be who are the cool kids in the company, who are the people that are like, uh, I, can't, I can't stand that, and, and I, I just want to make sure that as we grow, that's, that's like the opposite of the culture we have in our company. Okay, so you're not hiring any tools, that's what you're <laughs> saying. Um, last question for you, and that is, we talked about software, how software should be something that people want to use and delight, especially in the enterprise environment. Yes. You talked about business analytics as being something that everybody at the company should have access to, as opposed to a certain group that is driving certain decisions. Why do you think everyone at the company should have access to that information? Well, I think for every knowledge worker. So at New Relic, um, our support team needs data to better understand who needs specific help on a support ticket or how to be better with supporting a customer. Our sales team needs data to know which of the people trying out our product are most aggressively using it so they can focus their time with the customer. Our marketing team needs data to better understand you know, whether Windows users buy more than Mac users, that might affect our marketing program spend. I go down the list, but every function in our company uses New Relic's products, New Relic's software analytics products, to do their job better. I feel like every knowledge worker ought to, ought to be using a New Relic product in, in, you know, in the outer years. And so what we need to do is create something like Microsoft Excel for big data, something that anybody can understand um, and is as easy to use as Microsoft Excel, but you're, you're working on trillions of data points instead of thousands of cells. Okay, we're out of time, but thank you very much for being authentic on stage. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.